Hello, my name is Daniel Culligan. Welcome to the first video on Armenian syntax. In this session, I will give you an overview of the syntactic features of the language, how it deals with complex NPs, how it treats definiteness, and how adpositional structures work. Armenian is a thoroughly dependent marking language. If we follow Nichols' classification of the various constituents of phrases, we see that Armenian in basically all cases uses dependent marking. That is, possessors are marked uh, in possessed possessor constructions on the noun phrase level. The same is true for noun and modifying adjective. So here too, the dependent adjective is marked if there is marking. With adpositions, the object of the adposition is marked. And the same is true, of course, for arguments and adjuncts of the predicative verb, which are marked by case. Also on the sentence level, uh, main clause predicate subordinate clause marking is in the subordinate clause and not on the main uh, clause predicate. So let's sort of have a look at how this works in practice. Um, Armenian uses case on the dependence in noun phrases. So, for example, to express uh, possession, we have things like barikami tun, a friend's house. Uh, so here we have tun, the house, and the marking is on friend, barikami, which is a genitive singular case. There is no marking on adpositions, but on their dependent nominals. So we have ar tsankutian, for example, out of desire with a preposition uh, ar that we will come back to later in this session and then the noun sankutyun marked for genitive singular so here with the genitive singular ending and the whole phrase means out of desire. As for adjectives, we have already seen in the lecture on morphology that marking on adjectives is a bit more complex and depends on position and word length which means that in cases with no overt inflection on the adjective, we can have actually head marking structures exceptionally. Um, so this is the case, for example, where we have geritzik wie mark. So this is the example here, where we have no marking on the adjective, but only on the noun itself, stone, instrumental, plural, where the marking is only on the noun and the adjective is unmarked. However, the right edge of the whole NP must always have case and number marking, as we've already seen also in the morphology section. In the clause, arguments of the verbs are marked for case, as I've already said, and only subjects are indexed on the predicate by the verbal endings, not objects. On the sentence level, there is no marking on the main clause predicate in the case of subordination. As for complex NPs, let's have a look at them. NPs with adpositions, for example, show a complex behavior, including circumfixes and repetition. So circumfixes, for example, with the preposition e plus ablative, which denotes origin or distance. This may be accompanied by the local adverb anti from there, following the noun and replacing the enclitic definite article. So for example, as uh, you can see here on the slide, um, uh, yeah, from John 1911, we have one manuscript where we have manuscript E, uh, E herits anti, so from the Jews, uh, and in manuscript M we have E heritzen, so in the position where we have the anti in the one manuscript, we have the definite article in the other. I plus accusative may also denote direction and then be accompanied by the local adverb under to that place. So we have, for example, E karak under to that place, um, to town in this case. So karak is town and we have E the preposition and under there and they seem to work together to mark this directional meaning. In Greek, if we compare the definite MP, of course, we only have a stan polin, so the preposition, definite article, and then the noun polis itself in the accusative. However, things are not that easy. The article need not be omitted. So, for example, in this case, John 20, uh, 12, 20, both uh, manuscripts differ once more. So we have uh, in one manuscript, E, uh, ye, le lotsen under, that is, um, of the things, of those that had come, or of those who were coming. Um, and in manuscript M, we see that uh, we have no article but the uh, postposition. And in manuscript M, we have actually both. So the Greek original is simply ekton anabinonton of those who were coming. So it's not necessarily always omitted. So this is an interesting case um, in the language, which uh, deserves further study, I would say. 
Uh, I plus locative denoting place may be accompanied in parallel fashion by the local adverb ast here. So this is Matthew 26, 5, e toni ast, so at the feast. Once more, the same feature that we've already seen. And Greek has a simple definite MP here, ente heorte. With uh, prepositional phrases originating from the combination of a preposition and a noun, so this is the type of English on top of, for example, these usually retain the adnominal genitive. The preposition and its dependent noun may be split, however, and partly repeated. So let's have a look how this works in the case of ivara, above, over, for, or against. Here we have one example from Luke 21.10, uh, yazgi vera, here you can see E vera is actually split, and we have e at the beginning, so this is yod because it's in front of a vowel, and then we have ask nation, and then vera. And of course, the whole phrase e vera may also simply precede uh, the noun phrase it modifies. This is the example here from the Buzandaran, where we have e vera as a, the whole, as a whole preceding the noun phrase that it modifies. So both things are possible. Another example from the Buzandaran, here we see that actually e is partly repeated. So we have e nach neatzen merotz e vera. So at least the part e is repeated and occurs both before and after the NP that it modifies. So for our ancestors, as you can see it here in this example. Um, the nominal part of such complex appositions sometimes retains its inflection. That is an interesting feature, for example, with Korm side. Here is an example uh, how this behaves sometimes uh, in numbers 2, 3. We have Jarevelitz Kormane. So once more, here we have Jod, the preposition, uh, marking in this case uh, um, a, a genitive plural. Um, or preceding a genitive plural, and here is the ablative um, that it actually modifies, so from the side of the east. Um, so that looks like a simple prepositional phrase with two inflecting nouns, um, and so it wouldn't be interesting to talk about this actually, but Korm doesn't always trigger an nominal genitive. Um, so this seems to show that Korm is developing in classical Armenian into a complex circumfix. It no longer triggers an abnominal case that one might expect. So have a look at this example here in Luke 7.44, where we have ikin Korm. So this simply means to the woman, and uh, Korm is not marked for case, so it's probably simply the accusative case if we want to assign a case. Um, and that is, it's the same case that we find uh, with kin, which is dependent on the preposition e that can have uh, an accusative case following. In complex uh, prepositional phrases, the preposition, which usually precedes the whole NP, may be repeated before every single element. This is what we see in the next example. So that you may realize the truth of the words. So what we see here is that we have z, the preposition, um, marking um, also the direct object, uh, which is actually repeated uh, before every single element of the nominal phrase that it modifies. Repetition is obligatory, actually, in front of longer forms of the demonstrative pronouns. So, for example, and a wursen and einusik. This is a phrase that you will see again if you look at the section on uh, the gospel, uh, which is uh, commented on by my colleague uh, Ron Kim. Um, you will find this there. And a wursen and einusik in those days. Um, so this is uh, a re repetition of and before the two elements, and it, it seems to be obligatory in the case uh, with uh, Ainosik. Similarly, in Deuteronomy, we have e jamanakin yain mik, where also with this longer form of the demonstrative pronoun, the preposition e is repeated uh, before the two elements of the phrase. Uh, another interesting feature is that sometimes case attraction may occur, uh, especially uh, genitive attributes may sometimes be replaced by the case of the corresponding head noun. So have a look at this example from the Buzandaran, Varuk uh, Lavutyamb, which means uh, through a life of virtue, but actually what we find in, in the case marking is through a life and through virtue. So here, then, this looks like a case of case attraction uh, between the two nouns. 
Now let's come to our second topic, definiteness. It is marked on the noun in two ways. As we mentioned in the section on morphology, classical Armenian has an enclitic definite article with first, second and third person deixis. This is the form s, d and n. For example, manuk means a child, manuken is the child, manukes is the child where I am and manuket is the child where you are. This article serves to mark anaphoric definiteness, uh, so it refers to a referent that has already been introduced into the discourse. So, for example, uh, in Luke 4.17, Yev itun nama gears zisaya margarei, so they gave him a scroll or a book uh, of the prophet Isaiah, and then uh, he unrolled the scroll as Gerson, a bat, so he opened the book, he unrolled the scroll and found the passage uh, that was under discussion. So here you see um, that the article marks a reference that has just been introduced into the discourse. Um, it can also be used to mark cataphoric definiteness, that is, it introduces a new referent that is then subsequently made identifiable with more information. So, for example, in Acts 9.11, we have Gna and Porotzen vor kochi urir, so go to the street, which is called straight. And here Porotz is the word for street, and that has a definite article, N, attached to it, and then this is further specified by the relative clause that follows. Um, this definite article is not used, however, unlike uh, in Greek, for example, for generic reference. So this is what we see in the next example, in Luke 12, Ogi aravele kan skerakur, so life is more than food. So here, in Greek, both forms would probably have a definite article, but this is not the case in Armenian. It is also not used uh, when nouns have an intrinsic definite reference such as personal names or common nouns with unique reference such as son for example. So this is what you can see in the next two uh, in the next case so it's Matthew 24:29 Aregaken the sun without an article Havaristsi will become dark you have Lucin the moon also without article Vojtatsi is Louis Jure, will not give its light will not shine. An exception uh, to this is reference with a uh, specific instance of a unique referent. So this is what we see in this example here, Jesus vasen mahun nura aser, so Jesus had spoken of his, namely Lazarus' death. So then, of course, uh, a definite article is possible. Um, this also applies to personal names. Uh, in this case, then, it can be used to differentiate between reference bearing the same name. Um, this is in the next example in Matthew 27, 61. Uh, and er Mariam uh, Magdalena si yev mius Mariams, Mariamun. So there was Mary of Magdala and the other Mary. So the other Mary gets uh, the definite article. Now, the other way of marking definiteness in Armenian is on objects. Definite objects are additionally marked uh, with a preposition z. We've already seen examples for this. Um, so, uh, this is the case when the referent has already been introduced into discourse, as in the following example. So, Luke 2.12, Götanitsek Manuk. So, here we have uh, Manuk. This is simply, you will find a child. Um, and in Luke 2.16, then, a few lines later, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child, so the one that has just been introduced into discourse a few lines before that. Note once more, as we've just said here, is Mariam, is Josep. Um, these are definite noun phrases by definition, as it were, uh, because they're personal names and so they don't get the article attached to them. Um, Z is also used, however, uh, with interrogative pronouns. So it's not just definiteness that seems to play a role. So it is a bit broader in its um, functional range. It occurs with z and zinch, meaning what. Um, so these forms are both uh, nominative and accusative forms, but they must originate probably from the accusative. And um, they, so they are composed of the preposition z and the interrogative stem e and inch. It is also obligatory in the accusative of the interrogative pronoun who, zo, whom. So let's have uh, an example for that. This is Mark 4.41. Uh, zo vok 
Arsène. So here we have the who marked for accusative. Zinin genre wurde könnte it sam. So who do the people say that I am? And here we have so, which is obligatory in this uh, syntactic function. Also with indefinite pronouns, Armenian makes a distinction. Uh, and this time it seems that the uh, parameter is animacy. So z is obligatory with the indefinite pronouns omen, somebody, with specific reference, and vok, anybody, with non-specific reference. Two examples for this on this slide. Uh, tesak zomen, so we saw someone, ziyanun ko devesaner, so we saw someone casting out demons in your name. And in Matthew 17, 8, vok zok tesim bites me eines Jesus, they did not see anybody zok but Jesus only. Um, the semantic, conversely, it does not occur with the indefinite pronoun inch, so that's the difference uh, in terms of animacy. We have John 13, 29, so he should give something to the poor, and here we have simply inch, and there is no marking z or anything like this on this um, form. The semantically similar numeral one, me, is marked with z when referring to humans, and it is unmarked when referring to entities lower on the animacy scale. So let's have examples for that. Uh, in the first example, as me refers to a human being, and in the second, it refers to sheep. So this is here, Luke 15, 26. Kochetzial ar inken is me itzarayitzen, so is me marked with the preposition or accusative marker z, he called one of the servants. And in contrast to this, in Luke uh, 15, 4, we have korusanitsi mi inotsane, um, if he loses one of them, and here we simply have mi and a no marking on that. The parameter of animacy has become even more important in modern Eastern Armenian. This language marks definite animate objects with the genitive dative case in contrast to unmarked inanimates. So let's have examples for that. Uh, Ashot tesav aramin. So Ashot saw aram, and aram is marked for genitive dative, and it gets the definite article. Contrast with that inanimate object in the next example, arama kartume ais girke. Aram reads this book. So this is also definite, but it is inanimate, so it is not marked for genitive dative. So a similar feature as we see in the classical language. Of course, then, indefinite and unspecific uh, plus human objects are also unmarked. So in the following case, we have Aram bejishk kanchets. So Aram called a doctor, and here there is no marking whatsoever. Finally, let's have a look at adpositions. Armenian has six prepositions, and you see them here on the slide, um, that may govern one case. So this is tz, for example. Uh, that's the one here below, which uh, only has one case, namely accusative, and it means two. Uh, and others may mark up to have up to six cases, like und. Only the nominative is actually excluded. You can see the combination of preposition and cases then here on the slide and the different meanings that result from this. In the case of e and yod, uh, so this is uh, the second from below, uh, you can see that the semantic contribution of the preposition to the whole phrase is not very great, actually zero one might say, because the case semantics basically remain unchanged. So if it goes with an accusative, uh, it has goal marking, if it has an ablative following its source marking, and if it indicates a place, uh, if it has a locative, it indicates a place. And the same with instrumental marking. So conversely, with ist, the combination with three different cases, dative, ablative, locative, yields roughly the same meaning according to. Maybe what we see here is the beginning of the decline of prepositions as a word class. They are becoming either semantically empty elements, which can then be replaced by case marking, or they are lexicalized forms that no longer specify case semantics. 
Beside these forms, Armenian has a group of at positions that may both precede and follow the noun, such as handerds, meaning with, and vasan, because of, for the sake of. So here are some examples for this. Ashakertafken handerds, or handerds ashakertafken. Note that in that case too, we actually have a kind of double marking because handerds, meaning with, goes together with an instrumental that, of course, semantically gives the same contribution to the whole phrase. Vasen because of, or for the sake of, Nushanaki vasen, or vasen Jan Sanats Merods, because of our sins. So this goes also in both directions. As mentioned already, modern Armenian only has postpositions that are mostly recruited from nouns. For example, hamar, for, from classical Armenian hamar, number, and adjectives such as mot, at, from classical Armenian maut, near. In this lecture, we have seen some basic syntactic features of Armenian, how it deals with complex NPs, how it treats definiteness, and how adpositional structures work. Thank you for your attention.